what is up guys welcome back to the channel so in today's video i kind of want to talk about the cost of ownership of a motorcycle more specifically i mean in my example is going to be my 2023 zx6r again apologies i know it's filthy uh it's been to the dragon and all over town and hasn't been washed since but i want to talk about the cost of ownership of a motorcycle because a lot of people get into motorcycles thinking that they are extremely cheap in comparison to say a standard car you know gas wise maintenance wise so on and so forth uh, and overall makes the cost of your commute travel and everything else uh, cheaper and in certain scenarios that is true however uh, I want to go over some of the things that a lot of people might not think about uh, a lot of your standard stuff maybe you're not so much standard stuff depending on your background and what you know about vehicles so starting off let's start with gas okay this bike is an inline four cylinder that means it has four cylinders much like a four cylinder car now granted in a motorcycle motor specifically a 636 cc the cylinders are a lot smaller the gas tank is also a lot smaller i would not describe an inline four motorcycle such as a zx6r as fuel efficient if you're doing a lot of highway miles you are inevitably going to get more mileage out of your zx6r than you are say doing city riding it's just how it works you don't have so much stop and go traffic and fuel burn is more efficient if you ride a parallel twin such as let's just say a ninja 650 an r7 your fuel your fuel efficiency is going to be much higher you're going to have you're going to get more miles per gallon and you will potentially save on gas over something like a car again you're going to be working with the same size small tank um, but you have fewer cylinders you're going to be burning less gas it's just how it works again generally the smaller displacement the motor the better your gas mileage now that is not the case in all situations but that is just a general kind of rule of thumb more or less your leader bikes are going to burn way more gas than your single cylinder grom that's just that's how it is all right next let's talk about tires because this is a hot point of contention with motorcycles now myself i run bridgestone battle axe s22s they are considered hyper sport or super sport tires they last about 5,000 miles. Um, and as you can see, let's see if I can find one of my wear bars here. There you go. I don't know how well the GoPro will pick this up. Maybe the shadow will offset it a little bit. But this right here is a wear bar. And when your tire tread gets to that wear bar, that's when it's time to replace the tires. These tires are almost done for. They have about 4,200 miles on them. So I will be getting uh, a new rear tire definitely. And the fronts, let's check them. I'll probably be replacing the front as well. I mean, I generally do them at the same time. Yeah, so about another thousand miles. So, the tires. If you're going to be riding a Super Sport, you don't have to have Super Sport tires. That's not how it works. You can have touring tires on your Super Sport. You can have Super Sport tires on your touring bike. You can do it any way you want. However, there are going to be pros and cons to each type of tire. So, Super Sport tires are made to be extremely soft and extremely sticky. Now, they do that when they heat up, which is why oftentimes at a racetrack, you'll see what are known as tire warmers. They kind of look like uh, towels or wraps that are wrapped around the motorcycle tires. Those are to heat up the tires so that they are already warm and sticky when they go out on track. Helps with traction. In your general day-to-day -day road driving scenario, you will not be heating up super sport tires to the point of super racetrack stickiness. You're just, you're not going to get there. Um, when we went to the Dragon, and you can kind of see remnants of it here. When we went to the Dragon, we did get a bunch of cold tear on our super sport tires, uh, meaning they weren't exactly warm enough. Obviously, we didn't have them set properly for psi or you know racetrack use or anything but when we went to the dragon we did get cold tear our tires were hotter than they had ever been before um they weren't quite hot enough however but in your standard day-to-day -day road driving scenario your tires will not heat up to the point of racetrack stickiness no matter how much of a street rossi you try to be don't lie we all do it 
Also, again, Super Sport tires, you don't get a lot of mileage out of. You do get a lot of grip, you don't get a lot of mileage. Now, again, that grip comes when the tires are warmed up. Touring tires. Touring tires tend to be a little harder, not so grippy, but they also tend to last longer. A good example of these would be the Michelin Road 5s or Michelin Road 6s. Uh, as a matter of fact, when these tires are out, I'm going to be swapping to Michelin Road 6s. Now you might ask, why would I put touring tires on a Super Sport? Well, here's why. The Michelin Road 6s are touted to last somewhere between 15 and 20,000 miles, depending on your riding style. And they are touted to be more grippy than Super Sport tires are at your standard road riding and cold temperatures. Which means they won't have to warm up nearly as much to be sticky and hold you on the road uh, as well as Super Sport tires do. Is it true? According to their lab it is. How is the real world testing? Uh, well, we'll find out. They have good reviews. They are a little more expensive. Uh, we're looking at around four to five hundred dollars for a set of them for the ZX6R. Whereas a set of the Battleaxe S22s are somewhere around the three hundred and fifty dollar range. So a little more expensive, but when we look at 5,000 miles versus 15,000 miles, potentially, you know, the, the cost benefit begins to make a lot of sense. Next, let's talk about maintenance. Let's talk about general maintenance, more specific maintenance. So general maintenance, you're going to have your oil changes, your chain maintenance, tire alignments, you know, things like that. Now, if you are mechanically inclined or if you know anything about motorcycles they are not that hard to work on at least in the sense of general maintenance doing an oil change on your motorcycle is not hard it takes a little bit of time but it is not hard if you don't know how to do it your owner's manual will probably tell you and if it doesn't or if you can't find it youtube is the way youtube will tell you uh for an oil change for this motorcycle i spend about 70 to 80 dollars now the reason for that i buy a highly specialized oil uh it, i mean it's 10w40 it's a standard oil it, there's nothing specific about that uh, it's just the type of oil i buy i buy motul um and i will put the specific type right here on screen for you uh so that you know that's about 50 to 60 dollars for four quarts but then you have your oil filter and then just time so oil changes aren't that bad now how often you do them does depend on your style of riding and how well you want to maintain your bike. I do my oil changes every 2,000 miles. Is that required? Absolutely not. Could I go much longer? Yes, I could. However, this is a very high revving bike. As you can see, red line starts at 16K, revs all the way out to 18K. So, this is a very high revving bike. I like to maintain my parts very well so that engine wear and tear is minimalized so that's oil changes let's go on to chain maintenance i like to clean and lube my chain every 500 to a thousand miles is it necessary no will the chain be just fine without it yes however i still like to do it just to maintain it bottle of chain lube might be five to seven bucks and it'll last you quite a while people debate chain lube versus chain wax blah 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 to me it doesn't matter i spray on some chain lube let it rip your o-rings and everything should maintain uh i don't want to call it moisturization but they should maintain uh stay pliable and not be ripping and tearing for 10 15 000 miles so you should be good but again i just like to loop my chain something i do coolant there's not a lot going on with coolant you just check it every now and again on the zx6r my coolant reservoir is located right here behind the side fairing and I can actually check it without taking the fairing off. And as you can see, there's the full line. There's the low line. I don't know how well the camera will pick any of this up. And it is between the full and the low, which that's fine. The bike has been running. Uh, check your coolant when the bike is cold. Don't check it after it's been running. Let it cool off because coolant will return to your tank. And if you fill it up when it's hot, which you don't want to really take caps off while the bike is hot anyways but if you fill it up while it's hot you then run the risk of it being overfilled once it cools off 
Uh, other general maintenance is just going to be time based really, you know, clutch cable adjustments, wear and tear, um, brakes. Now, brakes, we again, I like to do myself. Um, I have not yet replaced the brakes on this bike, so I cannot speak to how much the brakes will be. Now, if you are doing just brakes and not your rotors, you shouldn't have to do your rotors as long as you replace your brakes before it wears down to the metal and you aren't etching your rotors. Um, rotors on motorcycles are extremely expensive. Brakes, I could throw out a rough estimate of a number. However, what I will do for this video is I will find brakes for my bike. And here you go. I will show them on screen right now. These are the specific brakes I would use were I to replace them today on my bike. So overall maintenance wise, again, bikes aren't too complicated that's basically a general rundown of basic maintenance other than you know washing and caring for your bike which water soap rag however much you want to consider that uh monetarily 